Hey everybody. I just have to give you a little story about this video that I'm posting. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Shelly's, Shelly Art, S-H-E-L-E-E -E Art, Shelly Carruthers out of Australia. She is a fabulous, fabulous acrylic pouring artist, resin, everything. And, um, I followed her on Instagram for a year or two, and she has a following on Facebook, and many of you are familiar with her, and she offered a course showing how she gets her beautiful cells, which a lot of times she'll do, she'll do smaller pieces and then blow them up and have beautiful prints made, and then she'll glue them onto um, tabletops and put resin on them, or she'll do it on rounds and different shapes and things. Anyway, her art is just beautiful. So I took her course, and of course she's in Australia, so the products that she uses are not what are available here to us in the U.S., and so I had to hunt and pick around to see what I could find that I thought was comparable, and apparently what I picked wasn't comparable enough, and then I also found out that... Um, our Floetrol in the U.S. is not like the Floetrol in Australia, so you have to add some wood stain conditioner to it. That's some drops of wood stain conditioner. Go figure. But anyway, I have since learned that there's some other products I can try that other people from the U.S. have um, used, and so the brands that I used, I just was so frustrated. This video that you're going to see very fast forwarded. I did 28 tiles in a four hour period. <laughs> I, I don't, it takes me four hours to do a regular painting with detail with acrylics and brushes. So for fluid art, that's a long time. And I don't usually spend any kind of time like that on fluid art. I was so frustrated. I was about to hyperventilate from blowing on the tiles and it was just, it was just a hoot. So I actually am going to keep the tiles the way I did them and I'm going to resin them and take them to the workshop that I'm going to next weekend that I'm teaching at. But it was quite a learning experience and quite frustrating and quite a mess and a lot of work and it cost a lot of money to get the pigments and all the products just to end up having it be like a so-so experience. So. Hopefully I can fine tune a few things and get it into a good video and you'll be able to watch it and learn something from it. But this is one you can learn how not to do something. But I didn't talk throughout the video. I just filmed it and like I said, it was four hours long and I cut it down to about seven, six or seven minutes so you could watch the, uh, the hilarious experience. So enjoy it and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Hugs.
Hey everybody. Howdy, howdy. I've got some tiles that I've poured and I've got um, some resin I'm going to mix up. And I'm just going to real quickly show you how I do that. But I taped off all my tiles on the back side with frog tape, which is this green tape, which is fabulous because like these have fingerprints all underneath. They're really, really messy underneath. So it'll make my life much easier after the resin dries overnight. I can just peel the tape off the back and I won't have all those drips that are dried on the resin from the resin. So you need two containers and you need to pour exact amounts. And I'm going to mix I believe about 24 ounces. So I need 12 ounces each of part A and part B. This is Famo Wood Glaze Coat Resin. So I'm going to pour, open up and pour 12 ounces into the container. And I'm probably gonna have more resin than I need, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. And with Famo wood, you have to stir for six minutes, transfer it to the next container and stir for six minutes again. So I'll be doing that and I'm not gonna have you watch the whole mixing process. I'm just gonna show you how I first get it going. There's, there's a little seal inside. So now I'm just gonna bring this up to 24 ounces on my measurements and make sure you have open windows, good ventilation, that kind of thing. Make sure you have a dust-free, pet-free, hair-free environment, and so forth. And I'm going to stir this for six minutes, then transfer it to the other container and stir for another six minutes. This is for Famo Wood Glaze Coat Resin. Some resins have different stirring times. Just make sure to read the directions very carefully. Always make sure to go around the edges of your container as you're mixing. And the cool thing about Fama Wood is when it starts warming up in the second phase, when you mix after six minutes, it'll start to heat up and then you'll know it's, it's activating itself and, and getting ready to work. And I've got a comb here that I'm gonna use to kind of spread it out a little bit, if that works well. And I'll probably have a a craft stick too. And I'm just gonna basically worry about covering the surface, maybe the sides, I'm not sure. The top part is my biggest concern. So, I'm gonna stop the video and I'll be back when the resin is totally mixed up and I'll show you how I put it on the tiles. So I'm in my last minute of stirring. I can touch the container and it's starting to feel warm, so I know that it's doing its thing. It's having its chemical reaction. There's going to be lots of bubbles, so you'll need a torch or a heat gun. I've got my heat gun here. Again, it's Fama Wood Glaze Coat Art Resin. And it's a two-part system, just like any other kind of resin. You have to add the... Uh, the part A and B together to get the chemical reaction of the, the resin to do its thing. I'm going to put it into a smaller cup so I can control it better instead of this larger container. I've got my, uh, my craft stick and I've got my comb to spread the resin. So it's really pretty much about ready, I do believe. So I'm going to stop stirring. I'm going to go ahead and pour some in a cup where I can control it just easier with a smaller amount. I'm going to start on these down here because they, they aren't as important as these are and I want to just make sure that I can kind of get it right. So I'm going to pour an amount out to see how much I need for each one. I'm 
And then I'm going to take the comb and just, or I could just pick them up and spread it. to decide how much resin I need to put down on the tile to cover it. And it's dripping on the other tiles and that's okay too. And that's why you do wear gloves because resin is messy. And I am not a, an expert on resin for sure. So I've got it, I think, pretty even. So I'm just going around the sides just to make sure I do see some low spots, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. I'll just kind of drag that out. I've got too much on that one, so I'll pour some onto this one. See, this is a this is something where it just takes lots of practice to get something like this down pat. Maybe I'll just use my gloved hand instead of the comb. It might be easier for me. Also, if you have longer hair, you need to probably make sure it's in a ponytail so that you don't get your hair into it at any, any possible way. Okay, so I did one extra piece besides the tiles because I had a little leftover resin and um, I'll post some pictures of the dried tiles when they're done. So I will be back. So these are my tiles that I tried to do the Shelly art way from uh, the course that I purchased from Shelly who's in Australia. So I have not perfected her style, but they're still pretty. And they have been resined. And this is the Famo Wood Glaze Coat Resin. So just showing the beautiful sheen on the resin. A beautiful glass-like look. Here is what I used. Thank you.